to ensure that we locate them and propose the dialogue that is necessary. Because we won't just give up because they've gone underground. As far as we understand, they are not yet dead. It means they are somewhere. We'll continue to look for them and we shall find them. Do you think they will, they will still have that mindset of dialogue if they feel uh, that they've gone underground? Because well, the scripture looked. says time and events happen to them all. So with time, as tensions dies down and we demonstrate that we still want to meet them, there may be change of mind or persuasion to convince them that we are willing to sincerely meet with them and talk to them. I've read several reports saying that uh, asking you, the ministry, to implement the Niger Delta Master Plan. What is going on with that? Yes, the Niger, the Niger Delta Master Plan is there designed for the NDDC. The Niger Delta Action Plan is there designed for the ministry. And by our engagements, we are defining and remodeling the execution of these two. It had been quite presumptuous in the past that people just think everybody will just concentrate on construct school, construct that, and so on and so forth. But having studied the mandate of the ministry, one has come to understand that the policy coordination is quite important, in which case every agency concerned with the Niger Delta activities must particularly and definitely be defined in its execution of functions assigned to them by law or by statute which is why we are sort of having a new you know what i'll call coloration of the uh, uh, execution of you know these plans we have had several institutional adjustments which suggest that the approaches will now be different because we are wanting especially to emphasize the fact that there has to be ownership ownership that is of our own conscience suggesting to us that we have as a right to reorientate our people. And so the ethical fulcrum of our ownership program centers on having to get the people know the implications of what they do and the uh, losses of what we are not doing. In other words, a belief system is being conjectured by the ministry. So we will begin to market that. Of course, we have started marketing that. And we are thinking of a program where the youths will be engaged, the, 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 the churches or the religious sects will be engaged, the women especially, who are custodians of household economies in the informal sector, are primary. So these are programs that are sort of fundamental and foundational to our new approach. Uh, are you coming up with new programs or policies or implementing the existing ones? Well, the, the, the existing um, programs are there. But our approaches are being adjusted so that they can accommodate all that the mandate prescribes for us. It is the approaches that are being adopted, but the plans are the same. And in reviewing the plans and appraising what has been done, there are things that have been left dormant. We are reawakening them. There are things that have been overemphasized. We are also putting a balance on them. So no one suffers at the expense of the other. Let's look at one project that seemed to have persisted over time, the East West Road. Yes. It's one project that has continued to draw the attention of Nigerians. And now the Calabar Lagos Rail, that's also for the, that is going to affect the Niger Delta. But what are your plans for the East West Road? Indeed, the East West Road is regrettable that uh, the, the ministry tends to be, <laughs> uh, is understood to be an. Uh, uh, another name for the east-west road because once you mention the ministry what comes to the mind of every Nigerian is the east-west road. Indeed. Incidentally the importance of that project cannot be downplayed. However, unfortunately for one decade for that project not to have been completed is regrettable. Nonetheless you can see even from the overall budget of the country the first year budget of this administration, laying so much emphasis on infrastructure because of its effect in other sectors, uh, suggests that the East-West Road is also a component of that infrastructure determination uh, development. Then, talking about the lagos Calabar rail line as it affects the East-West Road, I think is the very best because traffic component integration 
is effective in economic activities of any region. And so instead of being an alternative or substitute, it is a complement one to the other. So are you taking up the East West Road as a major project for your ministry to supervise, even if it's not directly under you? The East West Road is under us directly. We are not just taking it up to supervise, it's our duty to construct it, finish it, as we supervise it. What's your timeline? If we had money today, I will tell you, in one year, we should be commissioning it. Nonetheless, we have proposed at the pass of the budget to talk with the contractors to see how best we can agree to make sure in the shortest time we can finish it because the danger of allowing the road in that condition is that the more it prolongs waiting to finish the unfinished parts, the parts that are supposed to have been finished that are on the use are receiving pressure. And by the time you if I eventually finish or presume that you are finished, then you are getting to go back to maintain or repair the other parts that have been underused while the latter components have not been finished. So we want to make sure as much as we can, mopping funds from anywhere by whatever interventions, if we can, conditional to the fact that if we can get funds. Have you met with anyone concerning that road? Have we, you visited the place? We have visited, of course, not so once. Have you met because you, you know why we're asking the question, if you've uh, had any discussion with uh, especially the contractors on that road, is because uh, year in, year out, that road has been one sore point in that region. Uh, lives have also been lost uh, due to the bad state of that road. Uh, so what's the vibe you're getting from them to the extent? Yeah, we visited twice because it's quite important. And... Um, We've met with the contractors right on site and uh, at other office meetings. We understand all that they are saying. It all gets down to no resources to complete the road. That's the bottom line. And that's why we are trying to see how we will propose other means of raising funds. Because, again, that suggests psychologically to the minds of people the attention that the region is receiving from the government. Unfortunately, it hadn't been adequate enough in the past. Why, why, why isn't there any uh, budgetary provisions for that road? It's not that there isn't any budgetary provision. There is, but not enough to carry on what we expect to see. Yeah, but why is there not enough? The reason is because, of course, to ask why is not enough is like asking why is Nigeria the way it is. <laughs> and the answer is, I'm sure, by your disposition, you know better than I do. Because the budget, as it were, in all the ministries, there isn't any ministry that has got up to 50% of what it intends to do for this country. And we can well understand. So I, I, are you going to explore other sources to fund the project? Definitely, that is what we are thinking about. Except that anybody coming to put funds in that type of project wants maximum security of such funds. But we are still discussing with some other people, with some other organizations, with some other interest groups, to see which best option before I can formally go to make a presentation to uh, the council on what we think can be. I, I, I go back fact. to the issue of security. Uh, this is, I beg your pardon, guys. I go back to the issue of security because uh, uh, people watching now will be asking the big question about the state of security in the region where uh, which your ministry oversees. And uh, the thing here about the United Delta Avengers still will come to the fore. Uh, even if they have gone underground, is your ministry um, hoping to look into some of their grievances? Because uh, sometimes we see some complaints pop up, maybe in the social media, like press releases from the group. Have you been taking a look at them, or is this something that you would want them to bring a face uh, or representative that will come before your ministry to have discussions on some of their demands? Oh, thank you. You know, earlier I had said our response depends on the nature of demands that the groups present. And we are very willing to look at what they have to present to be able to make adequate responses. 
uh, as far as it does not violate the rights of others. And it does not also create another platform for extended volatile agitations. But security as a whole in the Niger Delta region today is not a peculiar situation. Maybe 12, 13, 15 years ago, the Niger Delta region was, you know, a hot spot or a dark spot in that regard. But today, the entire world, indeed, okay, let me take it nationally, the entire Nigeria is either having one form of security challenge or another. Just yesterday, somebody sent me a message about uh, Cross River State, how peaceful it used to be. But that within the first quarter of the year, they've had 26 kidnappings. It then tells you that we are all endangered because of loss of values. You should be concerned because I uh, am. Th th that's, that's your ministry. I am. But essentially what I'm saying is that you and I have a responsibility because if the ministry has a mandate within the region, and outside the region, in Enugu, you're hearing something. In the northeast is there. Uh, parts of Benue State, Kogi State, and so on and so forth. Then it shows that the entire country is endangered because there are no limitations to what determines who moves in which direction. And so even